And fortunately, we have the privilege of having in the studio a man with not just big, great ideas. Uh, and I'm talking about um, a doctor in economy, PhD in economics, and of course, the founder and uh, pro chancellor of two universities. How, how big a game can the ideas be? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dr. Dati Baba Ahmed, you're welcome, sir. Hello, sir. Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, Prof, mm. uh, let me, let me uh, handle yes, that. Yes, let's see how we can extract some big ideas here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, if Nigeria is going to be turned around, it's going to need creative governance. It's going to need some big ideas. And we're talking several. One of the ones we're going to start out with is uh, policy delivery units. Coming out of Margaret Thatcher's Servicom that began to let government get a grip on how to have a contract with the people and deliver value. Uh, Tony Blair uh, created his policy unit, which has been exported around the world. We'll be joined in the conversation by some who work for Tony Blair. And we have our own unique big idea blend that will draw from Servicom, draw from Tony Blair's, uh, and draw specific local uh, initiatives on how to ensure that government delivers. But the Obi Dati Baba Ahmed run has been built around ideas, built around issues. While the others have insulted one another, this campaign has continually ruled and us out. Too. And us too. Yeah, that's, yeah, yes, from time to time, too. they make room for uh, insulting others. You know. But the nice thing is that the Obi Dati campaign has refused to join in that reading of insults and just chunks out ideas. What do you think is going to be the outcome of a focus on issues and big ideas that can transform the country for the Nigerian people and what your government is preparing to do for Nigeria using creativity in governance? Yeah. OK. No, no, no. Mm. That's me. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, okay, that's you. all right, thanks. <laughs> yeah. The first fundamental, and which I have argued way back to 2018, is that we have to procure good governance uh, at lower rates. My good friend was talking about big ideas. Maybe the idea sounds big, but it is also simple. In fact, it is the simplest. It is no-brainer. Assume a bundle of goods. A part of that bundle in a basket is security. Uh, let's say 80% is security, 10% is infrastructure, and uh, another 10% is some other government deliverables. But you buy these things very expensive. Be why? Because in that basket, in that bundle, you have personal interest of those in power. You have group interest of the political party, of the section of the country, uh, of uh, alliances, fraternity. Uh, those interests make you to procure good governance 10 times more, so you have fewer. Now, what it means you are procuring 10% of the security, of the infrastructure, of social amenities that you should have. Because you're procuring 10% and not 100%, you are, you are insecure. And everything is breaking down. As you would say, all hell is let loose. The biggest idea now is that to start a new Nigeria, you need to procure this bundle of goods, this bundle of good governance, the right quality, the right quantity at the right price. The only way you can do it is to have leaders who have removed these interests. My lecturer is here, and uh, we're not getting academic, but I want to, because you see, I'm a firm believer in what I've just told you. I'm all about procurement. I believe in it. There, there is nothing you can do to Nigeria to turn us around except this. And governance about Nigeria has been about juicy contracts. 
the ability to give out wealth to whom you feel. And that is what Peter Obi said, there shall be no wealth without enterprise. Now, in 1953, there was a book by Ragna Nurkse, N-U-R-K-S-E, and it is available online right now as I speak. The title of the book is called The Problem of Capital Formation in, then there was this thing called Less Developed Countries. Mm -hmm. Before in the 80s, it became developing countries. When you people argued against it, sir. Um, in that book, it was said that the bourgeois class was challenged in growing. And so government had to give a push by means of allowing easy, some kind of easy money to the bourgeois class. So what was meant to be like a temporary economic measure, not even a policy, has become order of the day and our national life in Nigeria. If you ask me why is there insecurity, why do we have terror groups, banditry, and everything that has gone wrong, I will argue it this way is because we have been procuring our bundle of goods wrongly, inefficiently. You need leaders that are strong enough to block out group interest, Peter B and me. You need leaders who are content with what God Almighty has given them, Peter B and me. I mean, if he didn't take money from uh, Anambra State, what else, when he was even much younger, when it was easier to do, Governors take money easier than presidents do. When I avoided all I could avoid in reps and relied on my hard-earned little things that I have, what more can I get uh, in government? Look, it is more fulfilling to Peter Obi to see the 20 million out-of-school children again fully employed. It's like you're giving him they, somebody as you give him $200 million for the rest of his life, if you get 20 million children out of school, back to school, you have fulfilled Peter of his uh, ambition. The same way uh, about me. These are the kind of things. If Nigerians, just one more thing, sir. For me, if Nigerians can drive all around Nigeria at any hour of the day mm -hmm. without fear of being attacked. You have given me all the money I need in this life. Yeah. Everything you have given me, you've yeah. given me. And, and I want to come to you in talking big ideas. I mean, I got uh, the privilege of being shown around the medical school, yes. the teaching hospital part of Bayes University that you founded. Yes, sir. And it's state of the art. I mean, perhaps one of the best hospitals in the continent. Uh, uh, um, I mean, what enables that big idea that leads to a private university creating one of the top health facilities on the continent? And how does that translate in public life to using the same kind of big ideas to dream what seems like impossible and deliver? Three things are legacy. It's a family legacy. That is what we inherited, um, public service through education. So when in 2000, I've had this idea since I was finishing my MBA mm. in Cardiff in 1996. Uh, when in 2007, I saw how brutal the Nigerian political system was when I won and they took it away, mm. I was reinventing myself. Um, I fell back to existing family legacy which is mainly education. Then uh, character. Um, I'm not always proud to be saying this, but by design, by creation, and by character, I'm not really a politician. But I'm doing politics quite okay. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it out of necessity. And my character is that if I speak about something, I do something about it. Mm -hmm. I don't speak and keep quiet. And I spoke about the poor quality of education, which is the bedrock of any society. Mm. So I'm again committed to do something mm. 
about it. The third one is opportunity. Mm. Um, if at, at that age I was committing myself to a whole new career, um, I identified areas where the country is desperately lacking. Mm. And if I continued al along that, I, I could... Now, one thing for sure is that anything I'm doing, sir, I give it my best shot. I simply gave it my very best shot. And it turned out um, to be good efforts, and it worked out. It worked out. Mm. Um, I was, look, the university is the only one that has staff and students from every state of the Federation in its second year of operation. Mm. In its second year of operation. As founder, I do not have power to influence any academic affair. Mm. That is removal of interest. In the same way that I removed interest in my own enterprise, mm -hmm. I will be able to remove interest from in government, government affairs. And I will also block. Mm. I, will not, I have never allowed anybody to interfere. At substantial cost to my relationships, I will, we will block anybody from unfairly interrupting in government business. We will not bring relatives to come and live side by side with the president mm. to be treating government files. Mm. It will not happen mm. again. Mm. Peter Obi is strong enough, he's intelligent enough, yeah. he's I experienced enough to treat as many files as you, uh, you can bring. Uh, I know he wants, wants to yeah, yeah, do yeah. something, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I will come back yeah, on, yeah, yeah. on capital I, I before just, you go. Uh, in fact, you just touched at where I was going to. Because in Nigeria, we have not seen a shortage of big ideas. I mean, every government seems to have their own very huge ideas. We have seen rice pyramids suddenly emerge in the middle of the capital city. And at the end of the day, it does not affect the price of rice in the shops. And people are still hungry. All right. And for a billionaire, maybe an oil well is a big idea for them. But for the peasants uh, who is trying to do subsistence agriculture. They just want to own a small palm oil business. How do we make sure that these big ideas of government translate into the big ideas of those in the rural areas and everybody feels carried along so that all these small, small, oh, government is, is supporting SMEs on TV at the end of the day evaporates and does not crystallize in the various local government areas. How does the Obidati you know, administration, when they come into power, make sure that these things don't happen. I know you touched on a little on it, but I want us to elaborate. It is said that we Nigerians answer questions with questions. <laughs> I will give you two answers. One is a question. Mm. Have you ever elected President Obi as president of Nigeria? No. Not yet. So when you mm -hmm. elect President Peter Obi, you realize that there are people who do things differently. Now giving you an answer to your question is that as we have said all through our 37 rallies and more that you can you know us you hear the name peter obi you know where he's from you can go and verify it schools he attended his age his businesses what he did in anambra state what he has left in anambra state how he lived, what service he gave to Nigeria after being a governor, all there for you to verify. And this is a far cry from your typical Nigerian political leader. That is the answer Nigeria needs now. Okay. That is the answer to you. you uh, there are people in Nigeria who are capable. Mm. The system has consistently blocked them out. He, Peter B. fought for three years and was impeached just for him to go and leave 75 billion naira, 2014 value to his state. That is what he had to go through. For him to, to refuse to sign to get governor's um, take-home package, that's what he had to go through. There are people in Nigeria, we have an idea of some of them, 
we'll bring them on board mm. and work with them. Not everyone, in, in fact, the better part of Nigerians are good. Yeah. The system does not allow them to, to, to operate. Mm. And if, by the grace of God Almighty, when we succeed, we'll start yet again building a whole fresh political system under the mm -hmm. Labour Party, which will make it more difficult for the bad elements to come into governance and much, much, much easier for the good, good elements that we know we have. The public system, the banking sector, the organized private sector is freezing away mm. so much good human capital that can lead. Mm. We want to release them periodically to come and serve in government and go back to, to their private lives. Mm. We, we, before we go, I know you have to, to run. Yes, yes, uh, yes. A quick final one. We started talking about when you talked about Ragnar Nokse, uh, you know, capital. You mm. know, the great mantra of the Nokse era, this great Columbia University economist from the 50s, mm. was capital is made at home. Building of capital. I mean, when people say, for example, that P2B is stingy, mm. I don't know how to laugh, whether in English or in Igbo, because... <laughs> <laughs> that is the very base of building an economy. Savings. Capital is made at home. That was Noxe's uh, ultimate mantra. But since Noxe, a Peruvian economist, Hernando de Soto, has written significantly on what is called the mystery of capital. And the mystery of capital is about how poor countries, poor people, have huge assets. But those assets continue as dead capital. They don't get to translate into capital that can build economies because of the absence of what he likes to call representational systems, a good land registry that makes every piece of land you have fungible. You can never use it to borrow money. You know, Thank you, If your great-grandfather leaves you a, a, a small patch of land in your village, it has value that is known to everybody and you can borrow against it. But in our country... Banks ask you to go and bring your grandmother, your great grand, everybody just as collateral. And, but you have assets that are dead capital. Now, we need a system of laws, obviously, to open up the country. I mean, he goes on, for example, to give you an example of America, how that happened. Uh, one great big idea is how to make all this debt capital come alive for the people. I know that many big ideas like that have been considered in the Obi Dati Manifesto. Just give some sense to the people out there that this is going to be their lot and that access will open up and that this economy can grow like a rocket. Sir, um I will just add to your concept or argument of dead capital. Put the issue of land aside. There's even something that is more superior to land. Knowledge. Yeah. There are medical doctors, Nigerian medical doctors right now. There are IT gurus. Um, there are engineers all over the world. That knowledge they carry is a lot of money, but there is no space for them to perform. So in the same way you register a land, mm. and it has value, sir, mm. the moment you unlock the potential of a super medical doctor mm. and unleash them to operate in Nigeria, all these IT gurus, financial, tech, experts, and all those kind of things, sir, these are dead capital that Nigeria has so much out there. So uh, it's not strictly a matter of law. There are executive orders President Obi can, can deploy. There, there is simple um, fiat of the Federal Executive Council. M most of it will be administrative. And when we're going to make law, we will let Nigeria know this is not going to be business as usual. We pass it, we, we propose it, you pass it, Nigerians are waiting. So, but let me quickly uh, um, come back to the political turf. Mm -hmm. in, in to, by this time in two weeks, God willing, 
declaration should more or less have been made. I have always been an optimist, my desire, and that is because I'm a realist. Even when I contested for president in 2018, I was a realist in the context that anybody beside me in the then PDP would be wasting their run or their votes. And I was proven right. PDP lost. Now, realistically speaking, 18 political parties, 15 are hardly anywhere to be seen. Out of the three that are left, two of them have misconfigured themselves, one of them hopelessly so, in today's world. And I again want to borrow from a very great wise man. When late chief MKO Abiola said, you cannot ease yourself in a well and come and drink from it. Mm. What, why today is Omelokong not vice president of Nigeria is because what they are trying to make work now could not work in 2015. There is no way on earth it will work today. Yes, APC is on the ballot. Politically speaking, APC is not contesting. They are wasting our time. They are overheating the system. And most important is that they are spending the money they have amassed for this, and which is good for them. They can't die and leave that money. Hmm. The other party, again, eased themselves in that well which MKO said. When their principal said that it was the turn of the North hmm. in 2015, why is it the turn of the North in 2023? Remember, I'm a proud, respectful Northerner, and I wish it was Northern turn now, but it's not. As you say, it is the year of the Lord 2023, not 2015. When it was 2015, I was for 2015. So to say, the truth of the matter, it is not the turn. So, so, so let me just mm -hmm. say, let me conclude. Mm. There is only one party that is left mm. waiting to be declared as winner of 2023 presidential mm. election. Realistically speaking, politically speaking, peacefully speaking, Nigerianly speaking, speaking mm. this is the world of today, mm. global affairs, African affairs. Mm. You have to build it in Nigerian affairs. In 2019, Obi, Wike, Emmanuel Odom, and others who all had the resources, experience, people, and everything to contest, restrained themselves mm. from contesting. Mm -hmm. because I was not enough. exactly ready in 20, but I, because I knew 23 was not ours, 31 I couldn't wait for, and I was hungry to rescue Nigeria from the uh, strangle of the APC. Mm. I contested. How did I read it? These are Nigerian brothers and sisters. They showed respect to us from the other divide. A genuine, true love, respect for Nigerianness. And what does it deserve? It deserves another. Reciprocity. This is the, the re reciprocity. God Almighty does not make mistake. There are countries you have 100%, one faith, one language, one tribe. And then the God that not, does not make mistake put all of us 250 together, three major ones and two big religions side by side. I have faith that God does not make mistake. He put us here. His verse followed that we should understand each other and do justice to each other. This is Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mm not other countries. So this is Nigerian election. Only one party is politically in place, qualified, ready, prepared, and configured to be declared winner of 2023 presidential elections. Brothers and sisters, I so submit. This is the Labour Party. This is the Labour Party.
So you, your submission goes along a statement that I once made, Tina Obidati. You know, once upon a time when we were looking for a way mm. forward for Nigeria, when we were mm. starting the economic summit group and all of that, mm. we had sh shell scenario planners come and look at what the possibilities are. And we ended up with Tina. There is no alternative. Okay. And so there is no alternative to Obidati. It seems that Nigeria is headed only in one way. God bless you as you go in that direction. And we look forward to a new Nigeria because a new Nigeria truly is possible. Thank you, sir. Thank you Thank so you. very Thank much. You. My, my pleasure.